Okay then gang, so there's one last piece to the puzzle here that I want to add in and that is local storage because right now if I was to add some kind of book title and an author if I then refresh I lose that data and we don't see it there anymore. Now I'd like that data to persist and to do that we're going to use local storage which is a way for us to store data locally in the user's browser. So if you head on over to the application tab, you might have to click this arrow to see it and then go to local storage. You can see we have a local storage for this web address right here. And all local storage is, is key and value pairs. So we can set a key and then a value much like a JavaScript object, but this value has to be some kind of string. So I'll give you a quick demo. What I'm going to do is, first of all, just say local storage and press enter. This is how we access the local storage API in a browser. So if I press enter, then I can see currently it has a length of zero. There's nothing in it whatsoever. But also, if we open it and go to Proto, we can see all these different methods. So one of them is set item, and that's how we add an item to local storage. And another is get item, and that's how we get an item from local storage. So these are the two methods we need. One to basically save an item there, and one to retrieve it. So for example, if I say local storage dot set item, and then I'm just going to create an item called name and then the second parameter is going to be the value i'm just going to say sean and press enter and that is going to create a key of name and a value of sean so if we go to local storage now we can see we have a key of name and a value of sean and now if i wanted to get that item i'd say local storage dot get item and then the key which is name and that's going to bring me back sean hopefully there we go now, what if we wanted to save some kind of object? Because our books are objects, right? We can't save objects directly to local storage. The value has to be some kind of string. But what we could do is just JSON stringify our object, and that's going to turn it into a JSON string version of the object. Save that, and then after we retrieve it later using get item, then we can pass that back into a JavaScript object. So, for example, say we have a book so const book is equal to some kind of object and uh, we'll just say title is equal to blah and then the author is equal to blah sounds like a very interesting book okay so that is our book so if we type book now we see this object now what if we wanted to save this to local storage well let me just clear first of all we still have access to oops that didn't work let me just click this we still have access to book, even though I've cleared. Just wanted to give myself some more room. Now, if I want to save this to local storage, first of all, I'm going to have to JSON stringify it. So I could say local storage dot set item, and then I'm going to set an item called my book, and then I'm going to JSON dot stringify the book. So it's going to take this object and turn it into a JSON string. And then we're going to save that to local storage. So if I press enter and then go to application and local storage, we can see my book and we get this. This is a string right here. It's a JSON string. So now if I go to get the item, let me say local storage dot get item and we want my book. And in fact, I'm going to store this in a constant. So I'll say result is equal to this. Press enter and then look at the result. Now we can see that this is a JSON string of an object. So what we need to do is pass that back into a JavaScript object in order to use it properly inside our application. So all we need to do is say json.pass and pass the result in and then that gets us back the object. So that's how we can kind of overcome that hurdle of not being able to store objects directly. We just stringify and then we pass the result. So now we know the basics of local storage, let's apply this to our application. So the first thing I'll do is just clear this and then I want to go to application and I want to clear out these different items. So we've got a blank local storage so that's absolutely fine. And now we can go ahead and implement it inside this book context. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is save the data when a user 
type something into these fields and press his add book. I want to take that book and I want to save it to local storage when that happens. Now, at what point can we do this inside our context? Well, if you remember, we have this hook called use effect, and that hook is going to run every time the data updates. So currently, if we add a new book in the form, then this books data is going to update, right? So this use effect hook would run. So at that point, we could take that data that we currently have for books and we could store it in a books property inside local storage. That seems like a good idea to me. So let's now say use effect and inside we need a callback function which is going to run whenever the data changes right here. And as a second parameter, we'll do an array and say books inside it. So that means that whenever the books data changes, then run this hook. So then inside we want to say local storage and we want to set an item. The item name or the key is going to be called books. So it's just going to mirror up to these books right here. And we need to JSON stringify the array. So we'll pass in the books right there, which is the data we have. So we're stringifying that, turning it into a JSON string, and we're setting that item every time we add something to the list. So now if I save this and come over here, you can see we have this books array right here. And that's run because remember, first of all, this runs on first render. So because books is empty at the minute, that's what we've saved to local storage, just an empty array. But the minute we add some kind of book title, I'll say The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. You've probably guessed who one of my favorite authors is by the end of this series. Um, now you can see that we have this thing right here. So now we have an array with one book inside it. Now, if we add another one, I'll say the name of the wind, and that is by Patrick Rothfuss. If I press enter, then it's going to update over here. So now the books property has a value which has two elements inside of it. And that's because when we updated the books array and this changed, we're resetting this books item. We're overwriting it with the new data. OK, so every time we add a new book, it's updating what we're storing inside local storage. So that's nice. But still, when we refresh, we still don't see anything here. And this has gone back to normal. So that's not a good idea. It goes back to normal because on first render, we are basically just setting this to be an empty array because that's what it begins as. So what we need to do is let this begin as something else. And the something else we want to let it begin as is what's already in local storage at that point when we first refresh the application. So we can actually pass a third argument to use reducer, and that is a function. And that function should return a value which it will take as the default value. So it will ignore this one and take whatever we return inside the function instead. So let's do that function, an arrow function. And inside this, what I'll do is I'll try to get the books item from local storage. So I'll say const local data is equal to local storage dot get item. And we want the books. Now we want to only return this item if there's something in here. So what we'll say is local data question mark. We're doing a ternary operator. If that's true, then we want a JSON dot pass whatever is in local data. So we're getting that data and passing it into a JavaScript object. And then we actually want to return this value right here. So if this is true and we have something, we're going to get that data and pass it and return it. And since we're returning it, it's going to take that value as the default initial value of books. And then otherwise we want to just pass an empty array. So if this is false, we don't have data, then we're just going to use an empty array instead. So now if I save this, this should work. To begin with, we don't have anything because there's nothing in there. But if I now say blah or whatever, and then add this book, and then if I refresh now, now we get that book because we're setting it as the initial value right here. So let me just add another one, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. 
and add that book. And if we refresh, we can still see that here, delete one, then refresh. And this now is being kept in sync with what we have in local storage. So then gang, that is it. We've completed this application and also completed the whole series. So I really hope this has been of some use to you. If you do enjoy the videos, my friends, please do not forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial series.